Good afternoon. Sorry about the delay there. Uh, my name is Lucy Duskate and I am a creative producer and I also work on cultural strategy as well. I'm not an artist, I don't work in an academic institution, but I spend most of my time working with artists, arts organisations and institutions. Um, the sort of work I'm involved in is, well, it really varies, but it's always working with artists that work with technology. So it's that intersection where art meets technology. That's what I'm interested in showing and exploring and bringing out in the programme of events that I run. For the past seven years, I've been working at the Lowry and I've just now gone down to working part time there so that I can also work on some other external projects. And the body of most of my work is very much based across theatres, art galleries, but also public spaces in the public realm. And it's a really different set of places to work. And essentially, I work across all the art forms as well. So I'm working with performers, I'm working with visual artists, I'm working with musicians, a, a real selection of people. And I try to bring those together to produce programmes of performance programmes in theatres, exhibitions in galleries, and also events and public spaces. These are some of um, the artists in the last few years that I've worked with. Uh, we can see William's work, uh, Professor William Latham's down here. We had a VR Mutator as part of a December event, which was called Lightways, and we had a series of 16 artworks across a public space called Media City in Manchester, in the north of England. Uh, it can also, as I said, vary, f sorry, vary from being... Seems to have turned itself off. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, so it, it can vary from being theatre performances. So we've got Alex's work here where he's actually created his own instrument uh, and it, he builds and constructs this instrument uh, through to Sajina, who is very much uh, performing on the internet. She's performing in a sort of post-digital age, as she calls it. Uh, Shiva, who does uh, live music performance, mixing very contemporary uh, work in terms of uh, music production with uh, classical as well at the same time. And then things like um, we have uh, Herman in the middle, who's uh, quite famous in terms of his uh, performance works in theatres, as well as commissions from uh, outdoor sculpture pieces as well. For me, um, I've always found it more interesting to do the new commissions as well. Um, I really enjoy presenting works that already exist, but I very much enjoy working with artists to create new commissions. It's very much uh, an area where you're, you're and sometimes guiding or helping in terms of creating the space for the artist to make those works, but also there's a learning curve in terms of the space you're taking that work to as a new commission. So if an artist is going and working in the outdoor space for the first time, there's a whole set of complications around working in public spaces rather than a, th a theatre or a art gallery space, which is a very controlled environment. When you take an artist into an outdoor space, all sorts of things get, uh, get in the way, really. Um, you are essentially recreating the uh, gallery or the black box space or the public space. You're having to build that art space in the public realm. So that comes with a whole set of complications, but also interesting challenges, which I enjoy. Uh, we've done everything from large-scale theatre performances outside using projection of interactivity, um, we've also here in the middle was a large screen that was about 100 metres long and that was a commemorative projection piece that also had uh, live performance artists in the middle on podiums as well. So it was a mix of reality, projection, live performance, even fireworks off the top of the building to add a little bit more into it. Um, and then also we've uh, done very much interactive. The uh, middle top image and the far image at the far end, that very much is about where people walk into spaces in the public space and the lights interact with them. They actually track their movement. They actually respond to the idea of people gathering into space and into a particular area. This was the large uh, projection piece, as I was saying before, that we did onto a building. Uh, we tried to use, uh, I suppose in a kind of mixed reality, we tried to use the physical space as well as just using a screen space. 
So from this, you can see on, on top of the building, we've actually got live fireworks to create some of the kind of wartime effects. We've got a, a projection that's happening, and then we have the performers, which are just here, stood in the crowd on plinths. So they're, they're literally placed within the audience. And that way, there were layers of, of performance within this event that were happening for people. It's also, as well, part of the... Um, thing that I do is I work with people who are in private businesses, they're in local authority, they might be having things like the expo event, they may be having uh, large one-off events. Um, so there's all sorts of interested parties and for the importance, I suppose, is for, um, is for have a, a high profile for a lot of those people as well. They're always interested in high quality experience, but probably not as interested as I am as a curator and programmer in the artistic side of what is in there. So it's very important for those audiences or those, those stakeholders who um, are paying in or supporting or giving you space to run these events to actually see some of the public profile of these. So it's, uh, that's where we work a lot with the media as well. In terms of some of the work that moves into the indoors, um, so there's an, another outdoor work at the end, but when we start to move into the indoor spaces, it's much more galleries type spaces or open large foyer spaces where commissions are. Uh, in terms of the gallery spaces, uh, that's, that's uh, uh, very enjoyable in terms of theme-based works, and I bring together uh, group shows, collections uh, from artists who are working internationally. Um, Memo, I'm still trying to get into the gallery. I've got to find a way of getting him in. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a, a real international network, and there are a lot of uh, producers, curators, and artists who are working across a network internationally, and you can actually commission a work by Skype that costs a lot of money and you won't even see what it finally looks like until it arrives in the shipping crate. You unload it and you cross your fingers that when it plugs in, it's going to work. Unfortunately, it does most times. Well, every time, I'd like to say. Um, also, as well, where we've gone into spaces that are uh, traditional theatre spaces, very large 2,000-seater spaces where uh, we've tried to change what they're used or how they're looked at as spaces as well. So we've had interactive people in light suits running around those spaces in museums, which is the bottom image, which was NVA, Speed of Light, that project was called. Uh, that was very much about kind of um, sh through performance and movement, having people look at the space very differently. And then we worked at the far end, the red image. We worked with Marshmallow Laser Feast in terms of creating a robotic laser piece that had 40 robotic heads with lasers on. And it was uh, positioned in a theater up above this 2,000 seat theater so that it made people look away from the stage and actually consider the space that was around them in the seating area. So we wanted to fill and redefine that space. As I said, there were, uh, not only is there gallery work, but also the foyer work, the one in the far side, on, on which is your left side, um, and then the performance work as well. So there's a lot of interactivity as well in the work. We're finding the public are much, much more interested and able to understand interactive work. They find it very playful as well, whether it's in a gallery space or an outdoor space. They're really starting to understand um, uh, much quicker than we thought in terms of uh, the, the joy you can have by interacting with the work because they're already doing a lot of this on the phone in their pocket. They're already uh, streets ahead of where some of the galleries and theatre spaces are in terms of this. We tend to move a bit slower sometimes than the way people use things. So there's three themes of the work that I work around. As I said, we've got the visual art, we've got the performance, and then we have the public art. So that of visual art is the predominantly gallery-based work. The performance is much more theatre-based. Uh, it does go into public spaces. And then the public art is, is very much out in the outdoor space. So they're the areas that I work across. Um, I'd like to show you uh, a video of some, of some of the work as well. I'm hoping I'll be to, able to get online for a second. So just bear with me whilst I do this. It's a lot easier to show you the work sometimes, and then it's much easier to understand. Um, I'll show a performance piece, then I'll also show um, 
uh, sort of visual art. And we often make these films, are literally two minute films, but they're very much about uh, promoting what's happened, being able to talk about it, being able to encourage people to support us to do more things. So let's see if I can get my, around this. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is a large uh, stage in the outdoor space. We literally had to build this stage. Um, and this is, shows a, more of a projection piece in terms of this. This is by a UK company called Bro um, sorry, um, Motion House. Uh, they're an artistic company in the UK and they work with dance in terms of projecting onto a large stage area but trying to get the projection to work with the physical movement as well. They've also started to venture more into, um, uh, in terms of the dress that they use, the costumes that they use into um, digitally enabled costumes as well. Have a little look at another one as well in terms of the piece I oh it's starting up again. Let's make sure that stops. Great. Um, I mentioned the marshmallow laser feast piece. This was the one that was in the auditorium of a large theatre. This one was very much the idea of redrawing that internal space. Uh, it was part of a festival that we do biannually. You have to excuse my interviews on this. I'm going to move it on so we can actually see the work, which will be better than listening to me. Okay, so this is the up above the audience. And we ran this every show before the main performances of a theatre production. So people will be coming along to watch a standard theatre show and they'd be exposed to this seven-minute performance by lasers. And the idea was to take a theatre audience and give them much more of an installation experience in terms of visual performance that was happening in a traditional theatre space. They work with a choreographer as well in terms of how to move around that space and uh, did a laser picture of, of the whole auditorium as well so they could actually design this away from being on site and then bring this huge cross of lasers into the area. I'll scoot it along just to some of the other bits where it starts to... All of these performances as well are free. So um, in terms of the funding we can get in the UK, 
the idea, um, I suppose, in terms of looking at digital art is to bring audiences that wouldn't normally come to it. And it's part of my remit and what I proposed with the Lowry seven years ago was to say, well, yes, you can get a theatre audience, a gallery audience for very traditional things, but let's make this part of our mainstream programme so it's not always just being seen by people that come to specialist conferences or that come to specialist festivals. It's to very much make it part of the mainstream programme of a large arts venue in the UK. So as this goes through, it starts to move around and then spreads out into the auditorium. But we're going to have a look at another one of the projects. So that, that filling of the void, I suppose, the black space that nobody normally looks at was the idea. And then this December just gone, were, uh, we had Lightways, which is an annual festival of, of light. <laughs> much louder. This includes commissions as well as presented works. These are the interactive pieces Lightways in public Lightways space. It's 18 artworks, half of them are brand new commissions, uh, interactive works as well because we really want the audience to play with the works, very creative works as well and they're from local to national to international artists and the way for us is it brings in an audience that gets to be inspired, hopefully, but also see some contemporary art fully in those public spaces. Some of them are collaborations and co-commissions internationally as well with other organisations. It's important, it's important to share the expertise, the experience that we have uh, in uh, the interactive digital um, uh, work, especially uh, create for uh, public spaces. Also for the artists to explore new territories, new audience. When we have a piece, it will tour all around the world. And this kind of piece is a lot bigger, it's a lot heavier, so it's kind of hard to make it travel around. So it's... For, as an artist, it's very important to move it out of Montreal and see how other cultures react to it. This kind of partnership is very important. All the services are mirrored, so there's lots of opportunities for selfies and, and um, different effects happen in there. I've always been working in a gallery context, interior context, so um, to come out and do some uh, outdoor light festivals has just been, you know, fantastic, fantastic experience. Because this piece is about uh, uh, creating an artwork out of your movement. So it wouldn't exist without, without people, you know? First of all, it brings artists from different parts of the world together to an event. And it brings light to the winter. Artists like us that are not very, that don't have a big, a huge reach, you know? Uh, this gives us a good opportunity to showcase this uh, to a wider public. Everyone's tapping out rhythms all the time on desks and uh, on their steering wheels and everything else. I'm hoping that everyone's got some nervous energy ready to let out and, and create some light patterns uh, in Salford. As students, we're on a budget. And it is something nice that's free to sort of walk around and it is a bit interactive as well. So I've come for the past few years and yeah. um, some different things have come about and the one thing I wanted to see last year was the heart um, but it wasn't here last year so I really wanted to come and see it this year um, and it really wasn't feeling festive and Christmassy yet and especially with all of everything going on on Media City at the minute it, just, it felt like a really Christmassy thing to come and do I just need some more things like this I'm actually writing a piece at university at the minute about the regeneration of Salford um, so things like this is stuff that I'm really interested in getting more and more people to Salford and like, kind of breaking that stigma that it got in the past what, 20 years Anybody and everybody is welcome. We want everyone to come down and enjoy it. Don't miss out. It's only on for 10 days and it's fantastic. Right, so the uh, final thing I just want to talk about very briefly is um, the commissioning we're doing now tends to be much more uh, co-commissioning with international partners. So an example of that I'd, I'll share with you is this year we co-commissioned with Cat de Spectac, who are based in Montreal, fantastic digital arts scene in Montreal. Uh, they have a whole tax break relief for the film industry, so it's ended up there being an incredible number of specialist people who are also able to kind of move into 
the uh, artistic side of things. Uh, those international commissions where we're working with another organisation in Montreal, who, like ourselves, and uh, we're working from the UK, have been really interesting in terms of both of us are able to put money into the commission, but also artistically, where is our common ground? Uh, how do we work with the artist that gets uh, commissioned? Uh, so those have been really interesting experiments, and they're probably the things that um, I've started to get more of a hand of, and in terms of enjoying more, is that international sort of aspect spectrum of working with different partners. Uh, that's all I've got to show you for today, but thank you very much for your attention and thank you to the organisers.